And we continue at 2.06 in the afternoon. Talk Radio 790 KABC, the John Phillips Show, broadcasting live from the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Living Room Studios. Mr. Randy Weggs at the sports desk in Culver City. Well, John, last hour we told you the story of a homeless man that ran over another man who was helping him park in his parking lot. He ran him over in a Nissan Altima. The man is still they're searching for him. They're trying to find him. We may have a location of the Altima. It's possible, and I don't know if it's the same Altima, that it's all the way in Chicago at the Rainbow Push Coalition headquarters. Reverend Jackson, let us know. There's an Altima, A-L-T-M-A, 489-9410. Uh, please move it now. You're, you're blocking someone. Okay, I am far from a spelling bee champion. But did he misspell the name of the car? There's an Altima, A-L-T-M-A. <laughs> A-L-T-M-A. It's one of the greatest Jesse Jackson clips of all time. And anytime I hear Nissan Altima, it's the only thing I think about. And this is now 16 years. There's an Altima, A-L-T-M-A. <laughs> okay, what is the correct spelling? <laughs> A L T I M A. That's an Altima A L T M A. Was that the only car that was blocking him in? I think there's a Chevy Impala also. That was a Chevy Impala, dark blue, twenty two zero three one eight zero. Please move, blocking the fire hydrant, and that is against the law. And so, please move your Chevrolet before it is uh, excised. The church say Amen. Does everyone at the Rainbow Push Coalition have diplomatic immunity? <laughs> Are they all safety ambassadors? <laughs> that was an Altima A-L-T-M-A. Okay. That brought me back to 2006. Oh, dear. All right. It is our pleasure to welcome our next guest to the program. You can watch her on the Fox News Channel and Fox Nation. And, of course, listen to her on the Internet at TammyBruce.Locals.com and follow her on Twitter at HeyTammyBruce. Tammy Bruce, welcome. Well, thank you. Now I just want an Ultima, and I don't know why or where to get it. I don't I don't even know where to get it. <laughs> Now, this is what you do. What I, this is what happened when I leave Southern California. I go back and forth now between New York and Los Angeles. And what happens? I miss your show one day, and and here here we go with who knows what other clips I've missed and what other cars I want and I can't get. Well, it's a public service. If these cars are blocking the fire hydrant, we have to let the owners know. <laughs> that was an it's the only new. Look, look, Johnny, if we knew that he was so concerned about what was illegal and where cars were parked, we could have stopped the menace of Jesse Jackson just by parking in bad places nearby, you know, wherever he was having a meeting. It just would have stopped them cold. <laughs> He's very concerned about making sure that his congregants yeah. don't get their cars towed. Well, well that's do fair. him a favor. Actually, I like that. I, I appreciate that. I do. Me too. Me too. All right. Our, all right, Tammy, so much to talk about. Let's start out with the fact that, you know, this country used to make pretty good deals. You're in New York City. Mm. We bought Manhattan for $26 worth of trinkets. The Louisiana well, the, Purchase. The Indians, say, the Indians say that we were leasing it, so that is a big difference. <laughs> Rent it's to true. own. No, it's true. They're saying they didn't have the concept of they couldn't sell the land because only God owns the land and that it was really just kind of a borrowing. So you have that right there. Okay. But go ahead. Yes, that was a good deal. The Louisiana Purchase worked out for us. <laughs> Buying Alaska mm-hmm. from the Russians, that, that turned out to be a good deal when we found was out it fantastic. was sitting on all kinds of oil. But fantastic. ever since then, it seems like every deal that we cut with some other country is a horrific deal. The most recent one being a deal we cut with Iran – where we're giving them $6 billion, $6 billion. They have five Mm. American hostages. And Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, well, at least if we're going to give them $6 billion, we get the five people back. And we were looking into the details, 
And apparently we don't even get them back. They just moved them from the prison mm. to house arrest. That's what the $6 there billion go. dollars got us. Yeah. Uh, well, we actually, we were getting some very good deals uh, with Donald Trump. You can ask Soleimani about that and al-Baghdadi. I thought those were excellent deals. Uh, and, you know, they literally didn't know what hit them or bit them. So we, we were actually able to get hostages back uh, without having to pay for them. And now we've reverted to paying people. It sounds like we're paying Iran to keep our guys. And I don't know why we would do that. But that's what that's. Yeah, that's the Joe Biden family. They uh, are and the Democrats in general. There is this attitude that we deserve what happens to us. And I think that that's really what you see everywhere on the left is uh, miserable people who believe that they deserve to be miserable. Then there's projection. And so the country is so awful. We deserve to get punched in the face every day. Uh, The the people that are are taking our people hostage or trying to hurt Israel or hurting us economically or whatever China is doing at the moment, which is probably 10 million things against us, is that we deserve it uh, because we, we are the bad actor on the planet. That's always been the argument from the left. And I, I think this is what makes them resistant to actually having the country succeed. Americans in the mind of the left and their their Democrat uh, patsies, uh, that Americans deserve to be uh, hurting financially. We deserve to have no money. We deserve to lose uh, the control over our children. We, we deserve to live in fear. We deserve to just shrink away. That is a cancer. It is a cancerous thought. Uh, it is a disease of the mind. It, they are trying to project it onto this country and onto every single individual. And for my generation, uh, which is a little bit further ahead from yours, but it's for, I think for, for everybody who's alive at the moment, and especially young people, my God, the, the young people who think all of this is right, boy, are they going to get screwed in 20 years. My whole goal, is, whenever I speak to colleges, I tell the young people who are in their early 20s I, that I'm very interested in making sure they don't have the epiphany that I had to have at 40 years old. When you hit 40 and you're realizing it's, oh, oh man, you, you know, what the hell have I been doing? You're already past half of the time you've got on this planet. So I think that that's part of what feeds these absurd situations. Uh, whether it's how we respond to provocations like the Chinese-Russia joint ventures that keep poking at uh, uh, Alaska, speaking of Alaska, and around the Aleutian Islands. That, you know, we respond. they did that just uh, within the last week uh, with like a couple of dozen ships and airplanes. I mean, it was a real aggressive uh, uh, intrusion. And but the first time they did this, we sent a Coast Guard cutter to tell – uh, Biden did to tell Russia to, uh, and China to back off a little bit. So, of course, they did it again, big time. And now we, we responded pretty aggressively. But, you know, it's, it's like a, a, you know, a person who doesn't believe they deserve to be defended, uh, who is then facing antagonists. And, of course, they do nothing or they make bad deals to make it appear as though they are making an effort. Whenever someone gets in trouble, but the mainstream media doesn't want to cancel them for some reason or another, they always say, well, it's a teachable moment. That's the phrase they like to use. It's a teachable moment. Well, as all of the foreign despots are reading the news and looking at the details of this deal, you think about the North Koreans, you think about the Mm -hmm. cartels, you think about the various terrorist organizations, they're looking at this as a teachable moment and they're saying to themselves all we have to do is we have to go out and kidnap a bunch of americans or not even a bunch just five or six and we can get six billion dollars too and we don't even have to send them back and if that's the teachable moment that they walk away with then our entire foreign policy is going to be one great big liam neeson movie well you you know absolutely and you've got it really started with russia And uh, the basketball player and how, you know, we were, you know, on our knees regarding that. And then they took the Wall Street Journal reporter. And, you know, everybody's expecting money. Uh, I mean, look, uh, Joe Biden, as we're now learning, what was the New York Post cover about Joe Biden is Joe's for sale. 
you know, if this if, if we've got a president who and this is where you have absolutely literally no respect, if if it's true, if these allegations are true, then you've got uh, the, the international scene realizing the American president uh, is such a grifter and so corrupt that he can be purchased then why not just take Americans and give them and, you know, have some of the money sent back to them? I mean, it becomes a charade at the cost of people's lives. Uh, and I think that this is what the Biden uh, family has accomplished. It's what the Afghanistan withdrawal did. It's, it's how we've responded to uh, hostage dynamics. Even Obama set that standard, right? Uh, uh, t- trading, you know, the five Taliban generals for that one deserter. I mean, you've got Democrats who are just walking around on their knees uh, begging these despots not to kick sand at them. It's pathetic. And clearly the American people, you know, a lot of people obviously listening to your show know that this has been going on in Iran. But I can tell you, uh, the people watching legacy media have no idea that this has happened. Yeah, and as a point of policy, we used to be very firm with our position. We do not pay ransoms. You're not going to mm-hmm. like what we're going to do about it, but one of the things that we won't do is pay a ransom. And now it's like, Monty Hall, let's make a deal. What do you want? And we yeah. never had a public discussion. We never got together as a country and talked about this and said, okay, we're going to change what we're doing because of X, Y, and Z. It's just all of a sudden we went from this is our policy, we absolutely do not bend, to okay, we'll give you – get out the checkbook. Yeah, we saw that also – I think it was in the Iraq War where there was a lot of kidnappings going on. And the only country that paid ransom was Italy. So all the Italians were getting kidnapped because they knew that that's where you were going to get the money. And we wouldn't do that. We, we wouldn't do it. And that was, you know, it, it seems like a million years ago now, but it wasn't that far, far, far off. Uh, and you know, we've, we, the, the repercussions of this are it's not just for the individuals who are kidnapped and put into that position, but there's also a signal that Biden has sent to the world's despots about how he doesn't care about Americans when we abandoned all of our citizens in Afghanistan, we abandoned those who are helping us. I mean, even the worst of the worst, whether it's Xi in China uh, or Putin, would have to look at that and think, what kind of a freaking idiot is running the United States where he's abandoning his own people? Well, let's take advantage of that, of a guy who's, you know, going to be looking at everything transactionally. Uh, we, you know, we've got the same situation going on with Iran right now, with Iran trying to take over commercial boats. We sent 2,000 more Marines over there. And I, I mean, everything, the things that the American people don't know that are occurring is astounding. And it's a world really on fire. And they're, they're, they're just juggling at this point, hoping people will like, like the phrase Bidenomics better. Uh, it, it really is. It's a frightening time because of, of the aggressiveness of the bad guys around the world and that Americans used to be safe because there, there was a price to pay if you hurt an American. Um, and uh, it was a bad price. It wasn't that we were going to pay you a price. So I, I think the Afghanistan abandonment of Americans really set in, in, into motion this attitude that you could do whatever you wanted to to the United States and to Americans. And nothing would happen. We're speaking with Tammy Bruce, who you can watch on the Fox News Channel and get online at TammyBruce.Locals.com. Tammy, let's shift gears here for a second, because if there's anyone in the Congress who doesn't deserve a promotion, it's Burbank Congressman Adam Schiff. He is arguably one of the most duplicitous members of Congress, not only from the California delegation, but in Congress as a whole. He's currently running for the U.S. Senate, and he's polling within the margin of error on, in the one or two spot. Uh, him, He and Katie Porter are running neck and neck yeah. in that race. There was a report that came out over the weekend from Politico's Carla Marinucci, who said that she had lunch with Willie Brown. And Willie Brown told her that he's been in regular communication with former California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, 
who is thinking about jumping into this race. If Arnold Schwarzenegger were to jump into the race, he would be the only candidate on the ballot to have ever won a statewide race. And he certainly would be in the top two and bump out two out of the three Democrats Two, at least another Democrat thinks that they're going to be on that November ballot uh, and the math just wouldn't work out for them. Uh, he could be the one standing in the way of Adam Schiff becoming a United yeah. States senator. As someone who has a lot of problems with Arnold Schwarzenegger and <laughs> certainly don't see eye to eye with him on any number of subjects, I'm going to tell you, if he can provide the service of keeping Adam Schiff out of the U.S. Senate, I will be indebted to him forever. What do you make of this story that he's thinking about jumping into the race? And how do you like the prospects of Schiff being kept out of the Senate? You know, Schiff is an example of everything that's wrong with people who go into politics. There's some very, very good people in politics. But the, the lies that he told uh, as a member of the House about Donald Trump, I, the lies about having evidence about the Russia dossier. But the problem is, of course, nothing happened to him. You know, there's no punishment. There are no repercussions. And, and he's not, you know, he's not alone in his attitude. Uh, you know, we see we, this is why we've got so many problems here. For, for Schwarzenegger, I have to say, I don't I understand that it would be nice to not have Adam Schiff. But Arnold Schwarzenegger, he lies. Uh, I worked on his transition team when he became governor of California. I supported him. Uh, despite, you know, his background of philandering and all of that. He admitted that, and I appreciated that. And, you know, what we ask of, of everyone, men and women, is that we become better people. None of us are born perfect, and that we all make mistakes. And then he gets the housekeeper pregnant in his own home. And it's, it's, it's finally Maria Shriver divorces him, but it took years. I mean, it's that what kind of person... And when it, whether it's Schiff or Schwarzenegger, um, it does these kinds of things. Schwarzenegger, I, I would argue, with that kind of mentality, that's just one episode that we've learned of when it comes to his nature, uh, is not going to be any better. Uh, and I understand it's like we would just be trading one for another, but but I, when it comes to California, uh, it's such a shame that that's still the talent bench, that you have to go to Schwarzenegger? In order to think that we could get rid of somebody like Adam Schiff after everything that's happened, I mean, this is where at a certain point you have to just say, look, uh, people are making choices. uh, And, and, you know, you've got all kinds of cities now crying into their soup about crime and about the police and the, you know, the Oakland NAACP saying it's an emergency with crime. Well, you know, people keep voting. You vote for Biden. You you vote for Newsom. You vote for uh, Schiff. And you're shocked that the state is is in such trouble. Uh, so I don't think Schwarzenegger is uh, any better. Uh, yes, he would be a, a you know there's like old it's like when you walk your dog there's like old dog poo there and then there's fresh. So I guess maybe some people want fresh. <laughs> they would prefer fresh. Um, I don't know, but yeah, there's uh, I, at this point I would see I would say that there's. You would be under the impression you've made a change, but I would have to say, Johnny, I'm sorry, that you would have even Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger, because of the goodwill he might have, would have more time to do even more horrible things uh, to this country and personally, uh, because people just won't be looking. Uh, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not getting cynical as much as I am, I think, turning into a realist here. Well, I'll tell you. I'm under no aspersions that Arnold Schwarzenegger, if elected to the Senate, would be Henry Clay or Daniel Webster. But he would perform one important function. He would prevent Adam Schiff from going to the U.S. Senate. And Adam Schiff was so duplicitous, so awful Mm -hmm. during his conduct Mm -hmm. as a United States congressman. If anyone, anyone deserves to have their promotion taken away from them. It's Adam Schiff, and unfortunately, uh, so I can't. Are... I can't disagree with that. I mean, for the for the for the for the gesture of that, I agree. But um, yes, I mean, we're we're down to these steps that we have to take, and I can't believe we're even in this position. Tammy Bruce, Fox News. 
personality, political analyst, Fox Nation as well. You can hear Tammy and her podcast online at TammyBruce.Locals.com. And, of course, follow her on Twitter at HeyTammyBruce. Tammy, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll chat again real soon. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. All right. Talk to you later. If you'd like to email the show, you can do so at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. That's Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. And Randy, if you want to go back and listen to the Tammy Bruce interview for a second time, that's not hard to do. That's right. Just go to KABC.com, click on podcast, or go to the Apple Podcast app, iHeart, Spotify, search for the John Phillips Show, hit subscribe. You can download all of the episodes. You can even search for the John Phillips Show on YouTube, download everything there. When this gets posted at 301, you can pretend it was the first time that since 2006 you heard about the Nissan Altima. That was an Altima ALTMA. Four eight nine nine four one zero. Oh, uh, please move it now. You're you're blocking someone. <laughs> now, did the person driving the Chevy Impala, who was parked illegally, finally move their car too? Now, a Chevy Impala, dark blue, twenty two zero three one eight zero. Please move, blocking the fire hydrant, and that is against the law. And so, please move your Chevrolet before it is uh, excised. I love that man. One of my first jobs in the whole business was cutting Jesse Jackson clips, and I became obsessed. 800-222-KABC is the telephone number, 1-800-222-5222. Well, we told you earlier in the program that Kevin DeLeon, the councilman who got involved in a scuffle with someone who showed up to one of his Christmas events to get in his face, the... Final decision has been made by the city attorney's office, Randy, and no charges will be filed. That's right. Neither Kevin DeLeon or activist Jason Reedy, who you might know is the guy that comes to the city council meetings with a baby strapped on his chest to scream at Kevin DeLeon, will be charged in the fist fight at the Christmas tree giveaway in Council District 14. We actually have more details on this. Let's go to KTLA. No charges will be filed in a brawl involving L.A. City Councilman Kevin DeLeon. Fight happened last December between DeLeon and activist Jason Reedy during a holiday toy giveaway in Lincoln Heights. Reedy and other activists showed up to the event to call on DeLeon to resign over his role in that leaked controversial audio recording. DeLeon was heard on the recording comparing a colleague's child to a designer handbag. (laughs) I forgot about that. And then he tried to play that off when he was interviewed by Mark Brown, saying that, no, I was really just making fun of Nuri Martinez, and she's a racist. (laughs) As for the fight, both the councilman and Reedy blamed each other for being the aggressor. Yesterday, both expressed disappointment in the L.A. City Attorney's Office for not issuing any charges against the other. City prosecutors did not say why they came to that decision. And it was one of those really special Kevin DeLeon moments because, you know, it was an ugly scene and both sides are to blame. But Kevin DeLeon kept claiming the guy headbutted him, except it was on video and there was no headbutting. And typically, if you get headbutted, you've got a little bruise on the forehead. I've got to say, and I hate to side with Kevin DeLeon, but I'm siding with Kevin DeLeon on this one. If you show up to an event involving a public official and you physically get in their space so you can scream at them at the top of your lungs and try to block their ability to move from point A to point B, you're the aggressor. You're the one that's creating the physical contact. You're the one that's creating the conflict. Uh, You're the one that's blocking someone's ability to move around. Now, you don't have to show up and agree with him. You can show up and you can say that you think he's a son of a so-and-so if you want. Uh, Do whatever makes you happy. But you can't block them from going from point A to point B. And the minute you do that, you're the one that's creating all of the problems. And you're the one who I would regard as the aggressor. Now, since we've invoked his name, Johnny, do we need to recite the pledge again? Well, we did it the first hour, so it's been exactly, well, a little over two hours since we did it. So let's go ahead and do it again. Madam President, today is Tuesday and time for the flag salute. Mr. DeLeon, can you please um, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning? 
Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. It would be an honor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Under visible, uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. For which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin DeLeon. I wonder if in 16 years I'll be playing that clip. Now that sounds like Conan. (laughs) And you know, Conan the Barbarian was one of those movies where originally Arnold was dubbed. (laughs) Well, that first song you played, it sounded like it was from Conan the (laughs) O'Brien. Which brings me to an email, by the way. Stephen writes in at johnnydontlikeshow at gmail.com and wanted to know if we could play a clip of Arnold Schwarzenegger from the 1970 movie nobody's ever heard of, Hercules in New York. Because it was a movie that originally Arnold Schwarzenegger got dubbed out of. So they used his body and not his voice. So here's how it sounded when a later cut had Arnold in it. I don't like it down there. Let me be the judge of that. I am tired of the same old phrases. The same old things. Obviously, 1970, his English wasn't so good back then. But when the movie originally came out, this is how it sounded. I don't like it down there. Let me be the judge of that. I'm tired. Of the same old faces, the same old things. It sounds like one of the cops from one of those old school cop shows. <laughs> it's got to be insulting. You finally get cast in a movie. You think this is your big break, and they think you sound so not American that they dub you. The case could be made that you could have dubbed him in Kindergarten Cop, too. <laughs> Stop whining. You're not going to have your mommy slam behind you anymore and wipe your little douches.